My esteemed colleagues, learned members of the bar, registrars, and staff, we have assembled here to pay homage to Honorable Justice R.C. Lauti, former Chief Justice of India, who left for heavenly abode on 23rd March 2020 to at the age of 81 years. Justice Lauti was born on 1st November 1940 in Guna district of Madhya Pradesh. After pursuing law degree from Holkar Law College in Daur, he joined the bar in Guna district in 1960 and enrolled as an advocate in 1962. In April 1977, he was recruited directly for the bar to the State Higher Judicial Service and was appointed as district and session judge. After functioning as a district and session judge for a very, for a year, he resigned in May 1978 and revert to the bar for practicing mainly in the high court. On 3rd May 1988, he was appointed as additional judge of the Madhya Pradesh High Court and was made permanent judge on 4th August 1989. He was transferred to Delhi High Court on 7th February 1994 he was elevated to Supreme Court on 9 December 98 and took over as 35th fifth Chief Justice of India on 1st June 2004 before retiring on 31st October 2005. His Lordship's name was will always be remembered by us or every person associated with Madras High Court, more particularly Madurai Bench of Madras High Court, as his Lordship as per as they then Chief Justice of India inaugurated Madurai Bench of Madras High Court on 24 July 2004, which is indeed a historical event for us. His Lordship knowledge in all the branches of law and his strong view on the administration of justice are dominantly reflected in several landmark judgments rendered by him. In Harbhajan Singh versus Press Council of India, 2002-3 SCC 722, his lordship, after referring to the celebrated works and treaties on the statute interpretation, reiterated the golden rule that the words of a statute are not to be interpreted literally. It is reproduced injustice, absurdity, and contradiction. In Ramachandra Rao versus State of Karnataka, 2002, 4 SCC 578, speaking for majority of six judges of seven judges bench, his lordship held that when judges by judicial decision laid down a new principle of general application of nature, especially reserving the legislature, they may be said to have legislated and not merely declared the law. It may further observe that courts can declare the law, they can interpret the law, they can remove obvious lacunas and fill up the gaps, but they cannot enter upon the field of legislature properly meant for the legislatures only. In other matter of K judicial officers, 2001-3 SEC page 54, his lawyer held that just interested with the task of administration justice should be bold feel fearlessly while acting judicial and giving expression of views and construction of the judgment or the order. In 2006, 
the then Prime Minister of India represent the National Law Day Award to his lordship for his unique contribution in the field of administration of justice, making friendlier to the people at last. His lordship was on the advisory board of the Indian International Model United Nations, representing the country in the truly international and multicultural environment. He was also chairperson of the advisory board of the Faculty of Law at Manav Rashana University, Faridabad, Haryana. Jassi Lauti had immense interest in the legal aid service and alternate dispute resolution system. He served as an arbitrator in many high-profile cases. He was also keenly interested in the educational reforms and propagating Indian culture values and the tradition. In passing away of Justice Lahoti, we have lost a dynamic judge who has contributed immensely to the development of law in country. I joined my brother and sister judges in condoning the sad demise of Justice R.C. Lahoti and offer our heartfelt condolences to the wife, Shimasi Kaushalya Lahuti, coming from Jodhpur, Rajasthan, and three daughters, Mrs. Pankaj Swani, Archana Mantri, and Vandana Mardha, apart from other members of the Yet family. May God grant eternal peace to the departed soul and strength to the member of the Yet family to bear this irreparable loss. As a mark of respect to the departed soul, we shall observe silence for two minutes. In the honor of the departed soul, there will be no court sitting for the rest of the day. <laughs> 